Welcome to part 5 of the ROS Prototype to Production on Ubuntu Core video series, where we're talking about taking your existing ROS Prototype to Production by packaging it as a snap and shipping it on Ubuntu Core. In part 4, we created a gadget snap to allow for confined access to the TurtleBot and updated our ROS snap to take advantage of it. Today, we're going to be putting these pieces together into a custom Ubuntu Core image that's ready for the factory. Remember that this is also a blog series. If you'd prefer to read it, the link is in the description below. We talked a bit in part four about the components that make up an Ubuntu core image, but I wanna to touch on this again real quick. If you download and flash one of the generic Ubuntu core images for a reference device, you'll see that it's made up of three snaps, a gadget snap, a kernel snap, and a core snap. Since I'm using a NUC, I see PC AMD64 gadget, PC kernel, and core. We're going to create an image that uses the gadget we created in part 4 and includes our raw snap so that as soon as the device boots for the first time, the robot starts moving. Alright, let's get started. As I mentioned, as soon as the device boots for the first time, we want the TurtleBot to begin moving. In order for this to happen, the raw snap needs access to the TurtleBot at boot. We added the correct slot to our gadget and plug to our app, but this interface isn't automatically connected, which means at boot, the raw snap doesn't actually have the appropriate permission to access the TurtleBot. This works okay for testing purposes, but to actually have a production image, we need this interface automatically connected. Getting there will eventually be automated, but currently it's a three-step manual process. The first step is to simply get the raw snap into the store. We already did that in part three and released another update in part four. The second step is to get the gadget snap into the store. We already did this in part 4, but if you're currently waiting on a review for it, you'll have to skip this entire step for now. You can still create an image, but the interface won't be automatically connected. The last step is to create a new topic in the store category of the forum, requesting that the Kabuki interface, or whatever you called it, be automatically connected between these two snaps. A link to the forum is in the description. Alright, moving on. Ubuntu Core will verify that the image it's booting actually came from you. In order for that to happen, you need to create a signing key and register it with the store. You need Snapcraft and SnapD to generate, register, and use the signing key, and you need Ubuntu Image to actually create the image. You probably have most of these already from following the rest of the series. Alright, let's create your signing key. Now check that everything looks okay, it does. Now register your new key with the store to associate it with your account. In order to create an Ubuntu core image, we need to create what's called a model definition. The model in question is your device. The definition is simply a JSON document that answers the questions, what is this device, who created it, and what software is running on it. Let's create a new file named turtlebotmodel.json. As this is a model definition, the type is model. Series refers to the Ubuntu Core series we're using. In our case, it's Series 16, which corresponds to Xenial. Model is the name of our model. I'm going to use TurtleBot Demo. Architecture is pretty self-explanatory. Kernel is the kernel snap to use in this image. We just want to use the one maintained by Canonical here, which for AMD64 is called PC Kernel. Gadget is the gadget snap to use in this image. We want to use our custom one, which if you'll recall from part 4, I called PC TurtleBot Kairofa. Required snaps is the list of extra snaps to be pre-installed on this image. In our case, that's just the name of the raw snap we created in part 3, which I called TurtleBot Demo Kairofa. So far we've answered the questions, what is this device, and what software is running on it. Now we need to answer the question, who created it? In order to do that, we need to visit our account page on dashboard.snapcraft.io and copy our account ID. We'll use that account ID for both the authority ID and brand ID fields. Finally, we need a timestamp for when this model was created. We obtain that using the date command. We'll copy that into the timestamp field. Now that we have a model definition, we need to use our key to sign it, thereby turning it into what's called a model assertion. After giving your passphrase, a turtlebot.model file is created containing the assertion. The assertion we just created is all we need for Ubuntu image to actually put the image together. This will pull down the various components of the image, gadget, kernel, core, and our raw snap from the stable channel, and create an Ubuntu core image out of them. 
Okay, so what if your gadget or ROS snap isn't available in the store? In that case, provide a path to the snaps on disk by utilizing Ubuntu Images Extra Snaps option. The warning there reminds you of the limitation we discussed earlier. Once Ubuntu Image completes successfully, you'll have an Ubuntu Core image ready to flash to your device. Now it's time to test the image by flashing it to your device. This process varies depending on the device you're using. A link to flashing directions is in the description below. In my case, Classic Ubuntu is installed onto a hard drive contained within the NUC, but it also has some internal flash memory that I'll use for Ubuntu Core. I'll simply DD the image we just created onto it. And as you can see, as soon as it boots for the first time, it executes the daemon contained within our snap and the turtlebot begins moving randomly. If you've reached this point, congratulations, you're done. However, what if one or both of your snaps aren't in the store, or you were otherwise unable to follow step one? The immediate side effect is that the interface for communicating with the Kabuki isn't automatically connected. That won't work for shipping a device, but we can work around it for testing purposes by going through the first boot wizard in order to set up SSH keys, SSHing into the device and connecting the interface manually. Now the ROS snap has permission to access the TurtleBot. Let's restart its service by disabling and re-enabling the snap. Now you should see the TurtleBot start moving as expected. At this point, we've taken a ROS prototype running on classic Ubuntu all the way to a production-ready Ubuntu Core image with the ROS prototype pre-installed and running on boot. Every component of this image will automatically update, including your ROS snap. Admittedly, there are a few rough edges, but I hope this shows you how powerful snaps in Ubuntu Core can be. I hope you managed to follow along successfully, but if you ran into issues, the model definition and assertion I created are available for reference for both AMD64 and the Dragon Board. I've made images available for each as well. Links are in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the blog post or video, or ask in the Snapcraft forum, a link to which is in the description. Thank you for watching.